Hi friends! I am so sorry that I have not been able to post any videos this week. I am finally back in my living room with my laptop. Um, and we are going to read Princess Cora and the Crocodile. And here's the reason. I know some of you said that we've read it before, um, but some of you said we did not. Definitely the people who were not in kindergarten said they don't know the story. So that tells me that maybe it happened in kindergarten. It might have been in your classroom or in after school. But I have not read it to this group of first graders. So I thought that during our four-day weekend, it might be kind of a fun time to do this book. And then on Monday, I'm going to start a different chapter book with you that I've already picked out. And I'm not going to tell you anything. That's it. That's all I'm telling you. It's a mystery. So Princess Cora and the Crocodile is written by Laura Amy Schlitz and illustrated by Brian Foka. Here are the end papers. Hard to tell, there's a little pattern on there. Princess Cora and the Crocodile. Just saying, it's one of my favorite books ever. Notice all the detail in those illustrations. Ooh, so much texture. The dedication is to Twig with love and a crocodile. So Twig must be the nickname of someone. And to Esme and Helene and Daria and Jonathan by um, Brian Filka. Chapter one. When Princess Cora was born, her mother and father thought she was as perfect as a snowflake. Look at those big blue eyes, shouted the king. Look at her toes, cried the queen, and she kissed the baby's feet. They're like pink pearls. Ooh, and notice, pink page on the other side. Someday our little girl will be queen, said the king. All at once, the queen looked worried, and so did the king, because blue eyes and pink toes would not help Princess Cora to rule the land. We must teach her, said the queen. We will train her, said the king. Hmm. I wonder what you think they mean by that. That those things would not help her rule the land. Hmm. So that very day, the king and queen began to train Princess Cora, they stopped thinking she was perfect and started worrying about what might be wrong with her. By the time she was seven years old, hmm, do we know anyone who's seven? There wasn't a single minute when Princess Cora wasn't being trained. Wow. Look at that illustration. I wonder if you notice anything. What, what about those expressions? What expressions do her parents have? And what expression does, does Cora have? Oh my goodness. Can I see those for a minute? I'll show the students. Look at these beautiful flowers that just arrived at my house, friends. Oh my goodness gracious. Have you ever seen? Oh my gosh. These are, wow. Okay. Just, you know, regular life reading a book to you, getting interruptions. <laughs> That's just how it goes. The king and queen hired a nanny to make sure that Princess Cora was always tidy. The nanny thought that being clean was the most important thing in the whole world. Oh, I'm sorry. It doesn't say whole. It says in the world. She made Princess Cora take three baths a day whew, and watch like a hawk to make sure she washed herself all over. Into the tub you go, the nanny would say, and scrub-a-dub-dub -dub till I say stop. Sometimes Princess Cora got tired of, talk of taking baths, but the nanny always shook her finger and said, do you want to be a dirty little girl? Do you want to smell bad? Then Princess Cora turned red and took another bath. Oh. oh, I have to show you this illustration. Look at all the time Brian Floca took on outlining all of those parts of that illustration and adding color and shading and blending. Whew. Wow. Very tall space, too. When she wasn't taking baths, Princess Cora studied hard. Every day she went to the tower room and read books about how to run the kingdom. A princess must be wise, said the queen. 
The books were so dull that Princess Cora yawned until her eyes were full of tears. Have you guys ever had that feeling? Like you yawn so much that your eyes tear a bit. Sometimes she asked silly questions just to liven things up. Then the queen frowned an awful frown and said, Now, Cora, that is inappropriate. So Princess Cora hung her head and went back to work. Oh, you guys are going to really like this. <laughs> well, maybe you will. It's an interesting way to do an illustration, isn't it? After she studied, Princess Cora went down to the old castle prison, which the king had turned into a gym. Every day the king stood with his gold watch in his hand, while Princess Cora ran in circles and skipped rope up to 500. Faster, faster! A future queen must be strong, said the king. Skipping rope is good for you. Princess Cora knew that skipping rope was good for her, but that didn't make her like it any better. Sometimes she tried to say so, but when she did, the king squatted down in front of her and made his face look very sad. He said, Princess Cora, are you being a good girl? Princess Cora knew it would be of no use to say yes, and she didn't want to say no, so she burst into tears. What would that sound like, friends? Princess Cora wanted her parents to be happy. She worked hard at being clean and strong and wise, but deep inside, she was angry. Sometimes at night, when she was alone in bed, she whispered, Skipping rope is stupid, and I'm sick, sick, sick of those boring books. When I grow up, I'm never going to take any baths. I'm going to be dirty. These thoughts scared her, but she couldn't stop thinking them. One night, a new idea crept into her head. It was different from the others because it was a happy thought. She whispered, oh, what if I had a dog? She smiled in the darkness. She thought of a great furry golden dog that would wag its tail and jump on her. A dog wouldn't tell her what to do. That's what I want, whispered Princess Cora. A dog. I love how Brian Floca, um, illustrates the concept of her dreaming. It's kind of a floaty above her in bed. But when she told the nanny, the nanny cried, a dog, a dirty dog, a dog would make messes on the carpet. Good heavens, you don't want that. And there she is wagging her finger. And the queen said, dogs are for little girls who have time to take care of them. I'm afraid you're too busy, dear. And when Princess Cora asked the king if she could have a dog, he stared at his gold watch and shouted, Faster! Faster! Because she was trying to talk and run in circles at the same time. That night, Princess Cora couldn't sleep. At last, she got out of bed and wrote a letter to her fairy godmother. And here's the letter. Dear Godmother, nobody listens to me. My mother and father won't let me have a pet, and Nanny says I don't even want one. But I do, and I'm sick and tired of everything. Please help me. Love, Princess Cora. Then she tore the letter into scraps and dropped them out the window. But because it was a letter to her fairy godmother, every scrap turned into a white butterfly and flew away. That's the end of chapter one. And I am going to pause and I'll keep going and I'll upload chapter two very soon. Hope you enjoyed it so far.